reset the dynamite, which is the power of God, amen, the Holy Spirit. And we want to talk about it in dynamic ways that um, a lot of people don't fellowship with him in that area. Um, people kind of, you know, we kind of like keep them in the church or keep them in the prayer time and things of that degree. We want to take it to uh, another level um, to the fulfillment of his purpose, amen, that God may be glorified, amen. I'm going to put you on a, um, a millionaire task right now, uh, a wealth task right now. What I want you to do, and I'm, I hope, this, I believe I would say this again Sunday, but I'm saying it now because it came to my memory. I thought I could wait until Sunday, but it came now. Is that any opportunity, ask God for an opportunity to be a blessing to people publicly. And, and you don't have to pay for something entirely. You might can add $5 or $3 to their purchase or just give them $3 or $5 or something, you know, that, you, you, that you're able to do because these are some of the things um, that we have to have in, uh, can I say, in our, um, in our, uh, in our, our reputation as being a blessing, amen. And say so the more you practice it, your mind is going to open to another culture, and you always be on the, the giving end. And really, when you're on the giving end, you're on the giving end and receiving end at the same time. <laughs> amen. When you're on the receiving end, you got to wait. <laughs> when you're on the giving end, hey amen, you, you control the, you know, the time of receiving. And so I want to, you to practice that because um, what could happen here, sh what will happen here shortly, I, I want to make sure that you are a dispenser of it and not a person who just holding it for yourself. Because if you start holding it for yourself, you're going to miss out on the next level of that abundance, okay? Can, I, can, I, can we work on that? Amen. Be a blessing. I'm not talking about the people who are holding up signs and say, I work for food and give me some money. I'm talking about, you, you, know, you know. And some people are like that. You know, you can help them. But, you know, we want to we, we work in you know, places where you go in Walmart, you know, wherever, you know, Popeye's, wherever you go, wherever, you know. Matter of fact, you might want to stay out of Popeye's. I ate one of those chicken sandwiches. It was good, but it stayed in my stomach like four days. I said, this thing ain't ever going to leave. This thing said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> I felt so terrible. I said, it tastes good. I said, I'd never eat there again, though. No, no, no. Amen. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. Was this is um, Gail back there. God, don't get in the house. Um, let's go over here. To <laughs> but that was a long time ago. Amen. That was a long time ago. All right. <laughs> so let's look at the book of Acts chapter 2. The book of Acts, chapter 2, chapter 19, and verse 2, it says that, and he said to them, Paul is saying to um, these disciples, he said, have you, since you believe, they said, excuse me, let me, I'm saying it from memory, I'm saying it wrong, verse 2, he said to them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And they said to him, we have not so much as heard whether there be an, any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, um, unto what then were you baptized? And they said unto John's baptism. And Paul said, then said Paul, John verily, truly baptized you with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus, and when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul laid hands, laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues, and they prophesied. Paul, God used Paul to change their life just like that. They received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they spoke with tongues, and he prophesied. But Paul says this, have you received the Holy Spirit since you've been saved? And so believing salvation in the Holy Spirit, you, you, can't, you can't do the believing in the salvation without the Holy Spirit. And we must understand his assignment in the earth. And it, it's difficult to believe. Well, I, I'm going to tell you, it's very difficult. You really, you really ain't believing properly. You could probably persuade yourself to do something. Just because you did something don't be, mean that you believed it. Right. Amen. People pray, but they don't always believe when they pray. Right. People tithe, but they don't believe to receive when they tithe. <laughs> and so he says that because the Holy Spirit, he helps you to bring you into what you're believing for. Mm -hmm. He ushers you into that. He, he's a witness to us to let us know that it belongs unto us. Amen. 
And so it's important that we understand that we have to reset this dynamite. We have to reset this power because I'm going to tell you where we are right now. And I believe we become powerful people, very powerful people. Matter of fact, the devil don't even want you to think about no Holy Spirit. He don't even want you thinking about it because he, if he, he knows that's no match. Amen. When you have the Holy Spirit, I mean, you are the most, one of the most powerful people on this planet. How is that? Because you have the same very power of God abiding on the inside of you. Now, we don't want to say the Holy Ghost. We can say power. Amen. <laughs> and we talk about power for you to fall down. That's all fine, too. We talk about power to bring forth results. So watch this now. If you go to your house and you cut on the lights, then the lights are cut on by power, right? If you go and you cut on the light switch and the light doesn't come on, you're going to check the light bulb. If the light bulb is okay, then what are you going to do? You're going to go to the control panel. And sometimes you find that little switch up in there is kind of like loose or something like that. And what you got to do? You got to reset it. Amen. You got to take it back and bring it back. Amen. And that's what the Holy Ghost said. He said, bring me back. He said, switch me. Come on. Switch me back where I'm supposed to be and I'll give you the power. Because without that switch being over, that power having that connection, that light is not going to shine. Am I correct? And that certain thing is not going to happen in a believer's life unless that switch is on. Amen. Ha- that switch has to be on. That power has to be in the right position in our lives. Now, I'm going to tell you, we're about to come into an experience with the Holy Spirit. It's going it's to, I'm going to tell you, it, it, it's going to change. Oh, man, you're going to feel like an angel. I know you look like angels, but you're going to feel like an angel. My, my, I hear the Holy Ghost say that you can watch it now. You can feel like a child of God. You follow what I'm saying? Because He's the one who bear witness that you are a child of God. And matter of fact, it also watch it, and you understand that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. You understand everything around here, mines. <laughs> let me, let me, let me get that. I don't want to put up like that right now. <laughs> we can, we, we gotta, you know, we gotta learn some things and and, and get it there. All right. And so we cannot even believe correctly without the Holy Spirit in our lives. There are things that you'll hear on the radio. Good Lord, I just felt like crap old dog when I said that. <laughs> what that come from? <laughs> there, there are things I did. <laughs> there are things you're going to hear on the television, on the radio, that certain people will believe, and the Holy Spirit say, don't believe that. Because it is not the truth. You follow me? And there's so many things that people had believed before. And now that you got the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, watch now, will teach you what to believe. He'll show you what to believe. He said, now you can believe that. He see, he bears witness to the truth. He don't bear witness to inspirations. Because see, you can have a lot of inspiration out there, but it may not bear to the truth. And I hear a lot of people saying stuff and saying stuff, and oh, that, that's inspiring. That's, that's good. That's good. I said, wait a minute, but you made a little mistake right there. Mm-hmm. So we got to zero all that out because that's no good. Amen. So you have to be careful with inspirations because inspiration, the true inspiration comes from God breathing on you. When the word of God becomes life to you, that's called inspiration, inspiration, inspiration. You hear what I'm saying? It means when the word of God becomes breath, or life to you. Uh-huh. That's the scripture. Yeah. Inspiration is not somebody to come up and tell you to turn around seven times, aren't we going to do it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, you know, you know and come up with all these things. That's not inspiration. Uh-huh. That's motivation. Yeah. Yeah. You follow what I'm saying? That's motivation. Yeah. Now, see, we can, it's, it takes motivation. Watch it now. Would you rather have inspiration or motivation? Because, see, watch it now. If one of your cars broke down and four of us got together and pushed your car, that's called motivation. But if you put some gas in, that's called inspiration. <laughs> you follow what I'm saying? But once we start pushing, they ain't going to move no more. But if we got gas that I don't need your motivation. You follow me? So you got to have that, that inspiration. You got to have the, the spirit of God empowering you on the inside that you can do it, even if you have to do it by yourself. Amen. That's how we have people, they single parents raising children like they got the grandma, the grandpa, the uncle, everybody living now. The child got everything they need. Why? Because you're being empowered. You're being inspired. He's showing you what to do. Amen? All right. Let's, let's go up here. Look, look, look. look at this now. Ah, oh, man. All right. So let's go over here to um, John 16, verse 7. John 16, verse 7.
you, once you get this, you'll believe God for anything. Amen. You'll believe for anything. It, it, it makes it so easy to believe. Man, I mean, God, I mean, I, I wish I could just take my spirit out and read it. I don't know how to, I can't, it makes it so easy to believe. It takes the struggle away. Amen. All right, all right. John 16, verse 7. He says this. He said, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient. He said, it's better for you that I go. This is Jesus saying that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto ye. But if I depart, he said, I will send him unto you. He said, I will send him unto you. Now, what we want to look at is that he says it's expedient. So the Holy Spirit is supposed to make your life expedient and make your life better. You follow that? It, it, it makes your life better. In other words, and he's become that comfortable comforter. He, you know how anybody got a comforter in their house, in a bed? And, you know, and sometimes you don't need to turn the heat on. You just put that comforter on you. Boy, you, you all right. Boy, you, you sleep like a little newborn baby. Amen. Because you wrap up in that thing like a cocoon. You just go into something. You still probably suck your thumbs and stuff. Like, ain't nothing wrong. I ain't going to tell nobody <laughs> what happened. Is. We'll tell you what that's real watching. But that comforter comes on you. He frees us. Watch this. Man. He takes away pain. He frees us freedom from constraint. Freedom from grief and or distress. That's what he does. He frees us from that. And that's a lot of things and a lot of things that are going on in people's life that have held them bondage. And the, and the Holy Spirit said, I can take care of that for you. He said, really, it's a little small thing. You're making small things big. You got one person don't like you, think everybody don't like you. So he takes away what, what you think and, and what happens that he takes the word of God as you hear it and becomes sharper than a two-edged sword, rightly dividing, watch that, and dividing them some of the other thoughts and intents of the heart. And so he separates things. He put it all more like on a scale and says, look what you've been thinking on. He helps you see what you've been thinking on. He says, see how small this thing is? This thing ain't big at all. He said, you've been looking at it correctly. So when the word of God comes into your heart, the Holy Spirit takes that word and shows you how big it is. Then he separates your thoughts from what you've been thinking and what God thinks about you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. The only thing we have to do is change our direction, change our thoughts. And it's very important for us even to, to meditate on God's thoughts and think on his thoughts. Amen. Think on his thoughts. Amen. Become one with him in thinking. Now, let's, let's go a little further here. So he's that comforter, man. And not only that, He's the one also who's going to, he'll rebuke you too. Uh, he, he'll give you a little spanking, but no way, he don't, and if you feel bad, he said, okay, well, let's, let's move on from there. But he will correct you. Yes, he Amen. He, he will correct you. He'll let you know. He said, now, you know, you said something real ugly to that person. He said, he said and that grieved, not only me, but grieved our progress. That slowed down the progress. He said, you're thinking this in your heart. And your, your heart is not right. Why, he, and he, why are you praising God? He said, but you're mad at somebody else in the church. Why are you praising God? He said, come on, let's fix that up right now. <laughs> he said, he said, he said, let's, let's, he said let, let's fix that irritation. He said, because that's slowing you down. He said, and you can't hallelujah over the Holy Ghost. <laughs> you got to say, okay, Holy, Holy Spirit, help me. Show me how to deal with that. He, he's the one who comes to help us. He reproves us. He makes us better. Aren't you glad that we're not left by ourselves? Amen. What would we do? Who could we run to? What prescription is out there that can help us be better? <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now, let, let's move. It's best like on your job. You need a Holy Ghost so you can think better <coughs> about people. I, I taught at a, a, a school where well, it was a uh, uh, what you call those schools? What you call them? Uh, academy, and they and, and they asked me to come and talk to their staff, and and you know I talked to the the teenagers first, and then uh, I they left, and I talked to the staff. I said I said this is gonna be a good day, <laughs> and what I taught on I taught on how to think better about other people. You un they understand that was interfering with that goal being accomplished. Just thinking better about other people. And how to treat other people right. Because people know when, you, when you're thinking ill about them. They can feel it when you walk by. They're like, no, nah, I ain't see that. No, they saw it. <laughs> and watch that. And when you think good about people, it helps the progress. And so the Holy Spirit gave me some uh, insight on that. And so and really, everybody needs to just kiss and make up so we get the job done. Because let me tell you, because what God has called us to do is bigger than the issue that you have with people. 
Come on, let me say that again. What God has called us to do is bigger than the issue that you have with people. And what the devil want to do, he want to slow, he want to use you and, and your issue. Watch this now. <laughs> he want to use you and your issue to slow down the progress. To hinder the atmosphere. That's what he want to do. It's personal progress, unified progress, and whatever you know, in, is involved with that endeavor. And that's why we had to, when we have, the best thing you can do in prayer uh, to prosper is say, Lord, show me who I got thought issues with. I got feeling issues with. Amen. Let's get rid of this bag. I'm tired of toting this stuff around. Now, you don't have to go to them and say, you know, I, I, you know I've been thinking this way about you. You don't have to do that. Not the Holy Ghost tell you to do that. You follow what I'm saying? Because, see, there could be people you have issues with that are dead. I had issues with my father for a long time after he was dead. And I went down to the country, went to his grave and said, I forgive you. And I, and I know why I released myself at a grave. <laughs> you follow what I'm saying? And so it's important that you get these things out of your heart. But these things, these small little things, the small foxes that spoil the vines. Amen. And so you'll see that your tithes and your, 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 um, your, your harvest from tithing and sowing will be so humongous just for dealing with that little small thing. God ain't, God ain't hard to please. You ain't got to do big things to get him to do big things for you. Amen. You know, you, we, I, what good is me to travel all the way around the world and I, and, I, and I can't stand nobody, you know, whatever. And that don't make no sense. You know, you have those mad prophets. You know, mean, they're just ugly. They're ugly. That's why they're mad. Well, they ain't, that wasn't nice to say. No, that wasn't. I mean, they had an ugly attitude. I'll fix that up. Yeah. Yep. All right, let's, let's move on because Wednesday night's a short night. Okay. And so let, let's go. Um, so he takes away these griefs. He takes away these distresses he, and frees us from constraint. Now, in Romans 8, 26, the Bible says he, he help us in our weakness. When you talk about he knows our infirmity, we're talking about praying in spirit. Let, let's look at that right quick. We're just going to run through it right, right fasty. Mm -hmm. Romans 8 and verse 26, he says that, Likewise, the spirit also help us our infirmity, our weakness, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought to. But the spirit itself making intercessions for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And that he that searches the scriptures, that he's supposed to be capitalized, Searches the heart, know it was in the mind of the spirit, because he make it intercessions with the saints according to the will of God. Isn't that amazing? Even when you don't know how to pray, but you got an intercessor on the inside of you. Listen, that's on. And he takes what you're trying to say, but don't know what to say or how to say it, and he lines it up with that. We are spoiled. God, suppose God said, "Don't, don't even come up here till you till you know what to say." But sometimes life can hit you so dramatically that you don't even know what to say. You don't know what scriptures are. You say, what is that the Old Testament, the New Testament, the NIV? I don't know. Where is it? Was it on TBN or CBS or on Sesame Street? Where did I get this from? Where can I go to get the word I need? Sometimes life hits you like that. And God says, sometimes the only thing I need from you is to hold up your hands. Because you got a witness, you got a testimony, and you got a will, and you got an intercessor on the inside of you, watching now, to bring to pass what I have in store for you, if you understand, watch this, the relationship. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. If you understand that relationship, he's always there with us. That's why when Jesus said, I would never leave you nor forsake you, he's talking about the Holy Spirit being with us. Yeah. Because the Holy Spirit is the other Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Because, no, the Holy Spirit don't even come on his own agenda. He said, Jesus said in the book of John, chapter 16, he said, you know, the comforter, you know, he's going, the Holy Spirit, he's going to lead you. He's going to guide you to all truth. And he said, he ain't going to speak of himself because he don't have an agenda. He said, he's going to, he going to, everything he says is going to be what I said. And then he's going to take a mind and he's going to show it to you. And then he's going to reveal it to you as well. And he's going to lead you into it. And isn't that amazing? It's and that's his assignment. His assignment is not for him to follow us. His assignment is to lead us. But know something? He is not going to drag you. He's not going to put a leash around your neck and drag you around. Uh-uh. You have to follow him. You got to keep up with the guide. Amen. And one of the ways you keep up with the guide is to make sure you're not being guided by other people who will misguide you. Because those other people are not your friends. 
I'm excuse me. <laughs> They're not your Holy Spirit, amen. <laughs> they, they can be your friends, and sometimes your friend can cause your biggest trouble because you confide so much in there and you ain't consult with the Holy Ghost. What you think? Now, before you ask anybody what they think, you ask, you acknowledge God and let him die. Now watch it. And God said, listen, God said, this is what he said. He said, You don't even, I don't even, you don't even need to know everything what I'm gonna do for you. He said, I'm going to ask for much. He said, all that I'm asking you is just to acknowledge me in this situation. He said, and even if you go the wrong way, just because you acknowledge me, he said, I'm going to direct your path. He said, you could be going the wrong way. He said, I'll be right there in the center of the street like a traffic control um, director, and I'll redirect the traffic just because you acknowledge me. You thought you was going the right way. You didn't hear a thing from me. You don't know what to do, but you did the best you could do. And God said, just because you acknowledge me, I'm going to make sure you get there. Now, you understand what I'm saying? We are spoiled. If we was left to ourselves, man, we'd be busting hell wide open. That's how I say we'd bust hell wide open. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Some of them have been there yesterday or the day before yesterday. Are <laughs> oh, you following what I'm saying? We wouldn't be here today if, if, if he wasn't directing things for us. All the mistakes we could have made. All the, all the time we argued about and fussed about traffic being delayed, not understanding he was directing our path, yeah. protecting us from seeing an unseen yeah. danger. Yeah. Yeah. Directing us. Amen. Let's, let's move on now. So as Jesus is in heaven, he has no legal authority on the earth without a body. So he gave us his Holy Spirit, his spirit in our bodies, so that he still can have full right to use us as himself or for himself. That's why the Bible says that in the book of John, in, in the um, third John, a uh, pastor epistle, for as he is, so are we in this world. Why? Because we have his spirit and he still can do what he desires to do according to his word because his spirit is in us. Now he's legally in us by his spirit. Amen. Isn't that amazing? He's le- it's, it's amazing. Even when, when it came to Paul and, and, and the seven sons of Sceva, I know it wasn't Paul with the seven sons of Sceva. They say Jesus we know and Paul we know. In other words, they, they compared them alike. Why? Because as Jesus was, Jesus is, Paul was like that in the world. Why? Because he had the Holy Spirit. He knew how to, how to flow with the Holy Spirit to the point the devils couldn't pay attention. Have you come to torment us already? This thing over already? See, you ought to get to the point you got the Holy Spirit dwelling so much, you can just make, get the devil confused. He don't know if this judgment day or he don't know what's going on. <laughs> he, he looking at his calendar. He said, well, what, I mess up somewhere? He's calling his administrator and everything. He don't know what's happening. But he don't know if Jesus is back already or what. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. All right. Praise God. Isn't he wonderful, though? I just, I just appreciate him so much. I tell you, the more time we spent with him, just fellowshipping with him, talking with him, praying in the Holy Ghost, the stronger our lives get. If you're not praying in the Holy Ghost, you're missing up, building up your inner man. Now, I want to share this with you because, you know, you have, to, you have to strengthen within. You have to strengthen within. If you're not strengthened within, you could be weak without. I'm telling you the truth. If you're not strengthened within, you're going to be weak without. You're going to do things, and you're going to count it spirit. You're going to do it that. He said, but you're not. It's just like this. When, when I tithe or when I believe, when I give, I give from my inner man. I let my inner man tell me what to give. You follow me? Because my inner man know what's in God's account. My outer man know what's in my account. So if it's time to do something, if I do it from my senses, I'm going to budget, and I budget my, my harvest. <laughs> Put it this way. Okay. The inner man says, every seed that you sow is a seeding seed. It, it has a seed in itself. It brings back its own kind. So therefore, watch this now. So if you're giving away clothes or something like that, you don't give away clothes that you don't like. Because if you give away clothes that you don't like, you'll get a whole lot of clothes back that you don't like. Because you got it's a seeding seed. You follow what I'm saying? So you give away things that you like. So you have more of that back. And so the inner man teaches you how to sow. And he said, look, that's not all you have. He said, there's much more in store in, these, in this obedience. Hey man, I got like five or six thousand dollars worth of clothes in my car right now. Now I'm getting ready to get wet. So I don't find nobody on my side. I'm gonna put it in this thing over here. 
Amen. Amen. Not that, that thing over here, but I'm going to put it, you know, where you donate and everything. Amen. I can't, it's too much to carry overseas. <coughs> Amen. But this is fine material. And I try to keep up with it because it got my name in it. And see, we find over there, I can't give that away because that got my name. That's tailor made. Look at that fabric. God said, give it away. <laughs> Amen. And some of you hold on to stuff that you know you you competing against yourself for. I'm going to fit in that this year. No, you ain't because you said that last year you ain't fit in it. <laughs> so it. Give away things that you like. <laughs> Amen. Give away things that, that have some value to it. Amen. And watch it come back to you. Because watch it when the inner man is speaking to you, watch it. Now the Holy Spirit can bring you the promise of that thing to your life. Amen. You know, I was, I'll ask God again. I said, Lord, give me somebody to bless. Set somebody up for me. Again, take me down to Wawa again. And, why, and this is so crazy. Look, this is crazy the way it happened. Watch this now. So I'm in the store, and I'm coming to the register, and then a, 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 a person who works there was on break. I hate to see somebody who works somewhere and then purchase stuff from where they work. I don't like that. Because you're giving it right back to the people. I can see if they gave it to you free. You follow me? But watch this now. So they put it, they put it on the count, and they left. Shoot, I, I grabbed that thing like a thief in the night. <laughs> I said, is this it? What the lady said, yeah. I said, put it over there. I got it, right? And when she came to the register, the lady just gave her the, the ticket. She's like, what? What are you talking about? She said, the guy will pay it. No. And she said, oh, thank you. I said, hey, give, I said, give God the glory. I said, give God that smile and that thank you, girl. And you know what? I said it out loud, too. <laughs> Amen. I said, give God that smile and that thank you. And God loves that. You know what? And that'll make you rich. That'll make you rich. That'll put more money in your pocket. And I say, oh, I'm going to get rich. Now do it to be a blessing to somebody else. Amen. You follow what I'm saying? Just do it to, to make some, to get God the glory. <laughs> Amen. The Bible says, be good unto all men. Give it to all men. But he said, especially those with the household faith. So he said, even give to sinners. Now, I ain't give my money to no sinner, but to, hey, we supposed to win them, don't we? So the next time you come in there, they're going to hear you. And you can minister to them. Amen. Because, you know, we was give away money in one restaurant, well, one Starbucks place. I know, then, then, some, then I noticed that people started coming closer and talking after that. Like, you know, uh, I want to play. <laughs> Next, who, can I get some money? You follow what I'm saying? Because I know they tell other people, they, they, they bless them with some money or something like that, et cetera, et cetera. And then other people are open up and become more friendly with us. You follow what I'm saying? And so that don't mean that you got to give everybody money, but when they're here, their hearts are open from the good things you do because goodness opens the heart, and then you can talk to them. Mm -hmm. Amen. And minister to them right there. They're ready to receive. Let's get back at this because I ain't got no much time. Uh, I, I just like it. I, I love it. I got that from my mom. My mama was a giver, boy. I tell you, that was a giver, man. They still are giving. Amen. Look at this now. Okay. So Romans 8. 14. I wish we'd have three hours on Wednesday nights. Amen. Romans 8, 14. He says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, he said, they are the sons of God. Or they, they walk into that sonship. Now, you are a child of God once you got saved. But you walk in that dominion that you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. Because that's his job with the, with the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bonds again to what? To fear. He said, but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. He said, the spirit itself bear witness with our spirit. See that? What he's going to do? He's going to bear witness with what? With our spirit. And what he does, he bear with our spirit that we are the children of God. Not just a Sunday school, you're a child of God. A child of God don't supposed to act like that. No, a child of God has an inheritance. A child of God has dominion and authority. A child of God has rights. Amen. A child of God has God as their father. Amen. And so it's important what he's bearing witness to. Because we don't take a child of God and put it down to like a child. We don't we'll, we'll, we'll made it so small. I'm a child of God. But he said, do you understand what, what you said when you said you're a child of God? That means that you're not concerned about the texture of your hair or the color of your skin. Because you're not made in the image of your complexion. Of a complexion, you're made in the image of God. Amen. Amen. I don't care where my daughter goes. You can look at it. If I walk in the room and say, that's your daddy. 
because you, you have the image of your father. Amen. You follow what I'm saying? That changes everything. It's more than you coming to church. That, see, watch this. So the devil, when he sees you, he sees that what? I see the resemblance of your father. Why? Because we are made in his image. So don't let your complexion or the texture of your hair get you all mixed up on your identity. Amen. Okay, let, let, let's, let's move on here. Watch this now. He says this. He says, the spirit bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. He said, and if children. I mean, we participate with this. We understand we're children. He said, then you're heirs. You see that? Yeah. You see that? He did some of this nice people go to church. You follow me? Who put grocery carts back where they're supposed to go because you're a child of God. A child of God don't leave grocery carts out there in the parking lot. But you did. <laughs> Too cold. I ain't going back over there. Shoot. Watch this look at that. He says, and uh, heirs of God. And join as with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be glor also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed. Talk about us. For the earnest expectations of the creature waiting for the manifestations of the Son of God. Well, now watch this now. Every, everybody, let me tell you something. When you go to work in the morning, know who they're really waiting for? They're waiting for the real you to show up. When you go to the jails or the hospital, they ain't just waiting for a minister to show up. They're waiting for the real you to show up. Because it's, it's you who they're groaning for. <laughs> they're they groaning for you. Listen, if, if we don't show up, if we don't manifest, they will travail and they groan. Watch this now. And then there's a groaning within us as well, waiting for the body to wit the redemption. In other words, for us to recognize and to know and to understand who we are. But, but be, watch it now. It doesn't, we do not yet appear yet. But we know that one day we're going to look just like them. But keep working on who you're supposed to be. Understand that you are a child of God and the Holy Spirit will fashion you to walk into that power. Watch it. <laughs> I like this. Watch this. Now watch this. Now. Let's, let's watch it. Watch it. When uh, Jesus cast when the, the madman of Gadara, yeah. how did he address Jesus? He said, I know that thou art what? The son of God. He said, I know you are Jesus. He said, I know that thou art the son of God. I'm going to let that register for you. Are you catch, I'm trying to get you, watch this now. What he's saying is, is that if any, the, when the devil address you as a child of God, he know you are all in all rule. That means when you show up, groaning and travail cease. <laughs> that man got healed. The Bible says that and he was clothed in his right mind. Not just because Jesus showed up, because he showed up as the Son of God. Because he, see, the Holy Spirit, watch that, he forms you into the Son of God. You follow what I'm saying? That's his job, to form us and shape us and discipline us into the Son of God. And when we show up as a Son of God, travailing and groaning ceases. Matter of fact, everything you've been travailing and groaning over ceases. Well, you've been worrying about your family, worrying about this. He said, you walk into your sonship, it's the travailing and the groaning. Yes. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> He's amazing, isn't he? Yeah. He is amazing. It's secret. Yeah. Now, nah, I'm going to do it. I'm a dad. I'm going to do it. I'm an uncle. I'm going to do it as a pastor. No, you're going to do it as a child of God. Yeah. Well, how you know as a child of How you got Because the Holy Ghost is bear witness. <laughs> he was there the day of my conception. The day I was adopted in the beloved, yeah. that means that God, he, I'm the bee that he loved. In other words, he said, well, Paul said, be loved. He said, let God love you, man. <laughs> Stop being a knucklehead. Let God love you. He got you, man. He got you. Even when you make a mistake, he got you. Hey, Amen. I mean, that was Bishop Fuller preached that time when, was it, when I preached at Dr. Dollar's church. And he, when he said, God got this. See, they, they ain't know what he preached on. God got this. He said, stop worrying. God got this. 
Why? Because we are the beloved God. Amen. And you know what? That's, that's amazing. Because look, here I am. Here I is this. <laughs> Watch it now. I come from Washington Park. I probably had about, maybe about, uh, I don't know how many members we had at that time. It was very little. And now I'm up here preaching with Dr. Doctor, executive director, and his first armor borough. And I pre I'm in between. I said, how do, I like, how do, how do you even, how do you just squeeze up in there like that? The Holy Ghost put you there. Right. Why would my mama prophesy under the Holy Ghost? Amen. And that's amazing. And when they, that picture came up, they like, people like, what? <laughs> it still amazes me. It, it still amazes me. It, it amazes me how God just squeezed me right up in there between those two mighty men. Amen. And then one time he said, we'll try to get Dr. Dollar to preach on that. I said, no, 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 no. <laughs> like my little niece while I try to kiss, she said, no, 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 no. <laughs> I got scared, man. But, you know, he couldn't, uh, he couldn't uh, meet that one right there. And I, but it was, it's amazing. See, the Holy Ghost does all that. He moved things around, get things ready for you. You just got to let them lead you. Stop. You ain't got to make nothing happen for yourself. You ain't got to fish for nobody. You got to fish for no opportunity. He knows, he knows exactly where you're supposed to be. And he likes to do stuff that make you want to thank God and keep praising him for it. Amen. Okay. Where are we? Thou is there. Okay. Okay, so we, we, let, well let's, let's move on here. All right. Now let's let's um, go over here to if not only that, but you know, remember Acts when we talk about that. Um, let's go back to Acts right quick. Acts, uh, what's that? Acts? That wasn't Acts. That was not Romans. We in the right place. Oh Lord, where are you going, man? Romans seventeen. When he says, and if we are children, then heirs, and heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. Then he's talking about being an heir, so his assignment is also to bring us into our inheritance. You see that? To bring us into our inheritance. Now, if we go over here to the book of Ephesians, chapter 1. And we're going to look here at verse 13. He said, in whom you also trusted. Well, let's look at verse 12. He said that you should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. In whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. The Holy Spirit carries the promise of God that was given to the apostles and prophesied by the prophets, he holds all of that. Everything that God made covenant with Abraham that he promised him, everything, and every, all the prophets that they prophesied, all of those things that were mentioned those days, the Holy Spirit holds all of that. He's the spirit of promise. Now, he says that, and we were sealed with him. We sealed with that. He says in verse 14, which is the earnest of our in what? inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Now, you got to understand what an earnest is. An earnest is, is taking, watch now, it's like when you buy a house, it is on the market. You had to put down $500, it's called earnest payment, down payment. You take that house off the market, okay? So once you receive the Holy Spirit, you take it off the market. You follow what I'm saying? Now, not only that, he's just the... He, he, God said, listen, and this is so powerful. He said he's just the earnest. He's just the down payment. That means that, watch it now, that every dream, every desire is already guaranteed. It's already guaranteed. He said, this is my earnest down payment to take you off the market of frustration, lack, poverty, sickness, and disease, and all these different things, and take you off the market of all those d d discouraging things. Watch it now. Until the, until the purchase possession, until the praise of his glory. So everything that Jesus' blood um, purchased for you, that you come into that possession. Amen. And Eve all went up into heaven. And God said he's the earnest. 
He's the one who claims you to make you qualify for all of it. See, watch it. Once I take, <laughs> once I put money down the house and take it off the market, I can tell everybody that's my house. I'm gonna live in it. So he had to get the house in order for God to live in it. That's why he he dwells in us by his spirit. Amen. He dwells in us by his spirit. Now, let, let, let's move on. Watch this now. Man, this is so fascinating. It, it, it just, I tell you, it just, it just, I don't want to see how people, it, oh, well, I can't even say it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. No, no, no I'm not going to say that. Verse 7. Mm-mm. Okay. Let's, let's go over here to, um, now we're going to do that. Okay. Let's look at chapter 2, verse 18. Then it says, for through him, watch this, now, through Jesus, we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. You see that? So it's because of the Holy Spirit, watch this now, we, with Jesus, he said we both, he's talking about Jesus, he's not talking about Paul and, and us, he's talking about Jesus and us, amen. We both have access to God. You see that? Because of the Holy Spirit. We have access to it. We have an entrance. We can get in. You follow me? So he makes sure that we are connected and we have access with God in the name of Jesus. Now look how small you are. We are. Let me put this in there because we are God's favorite children. Now he put his spirit in us to give us Straight access to him, and then when we come to him, watch this now, we have a what? We have our big brother sitting on the right-hand side of him. To guarantee, watch this now, you got guaranteed access, and you also have a guaranteed promise. Because the son is sitting up there on the right hand of the father, watch this now, and he's the one who's reminding the father of the blood covenant that we have. Amen. So we have the same access that, that Jesus has. If you look at the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, look, 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 look at this. Watch this. Look at this. Look at this. Watch this. Look how pow- this is how powerful. This is so powerful. This is how powerful it is. <laughs> Amen. Let me find the powerful thing first. Amen. I think it's in, no, it's not in chapter 1. Watch it. Now, yeah. Chapter 1. He says, uh, Verse 20, for he walked, that means his power of his spirit in Christ, when he raised him up from the dead, and he set him at his own what? Who he set at his own right hand? Jesus. Right? Okay, now chapter 2. And let's look over here in verse 6. And what does that say? Let us read. Chapter 2, verse 6. And has raised who up? Us up together with, with, with Jesus. And made us sit together in heavenly place with Christ. You see that? He raised Jesus up, put him on the right hand of the Father. He said, when Jesus was raised, you and I was raised, we sit on the right hand side of the Father. And we have access to him by the, by the Spirit, even though Jesus is still sitting in heaven, but his Spirit is with us in the earth, watching that, so ain't no difference. So that means that you can have the same stuff that's in heaven right now on the earth, because we have all access. We have, we have, come on, man, you hear what I'm saying? God said that it should be no difference right now, that where you are right now should be a garden of Eden, it should look like heaven. Okay, all right, look at this, look at this. All right, watch it now. Watch this. Listen to it. This is what we'll close. The, the book of Genesis, right? The Bible says that the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the earth, over the waters, right? And when God spoke the word, watch this now, the Holy Spirit brought it to pass. Yeah. But he was hovering, yeah. right? Watch this now. Now, watch this now, we have Mary. And the angel appeared to Mary and said, you are highly favored. He spoke the word. And Mary said, how this thing going to be? Same old thing. The Holy Spirit going to overshadow you. Because he brings what is said of God's word to pass. Now you have Jesus in the, in, at, at Jordan about to be baptized. He's the word. Now the Holy Spirit hovers over him. So therefore, whenever we have the word, expect the Holy Spirit to hover. 
Because he's so connected to the word. You follow what I'm saying? It's nothing. That's why all things are possible. Because you got power to bring it to pass. You say, well, if I pray a little harder, if I feel a little something, no. If I know how this thing going to work, I know I got the power of God, the promise of the Spirit dwelling on the inside of me, waiting for me to speak this word. And he going to hover over it, make it happen. He's the one who brings it to pass. Now, how long you pray? You can pray for a second, but if you understand the connection, it'll happen. Yeah. And so in prayer, you don't have to be struggling in prayer. You can have some fun in prayer with God. Amen. You can have some fun in relationship and in prayer. It's like, Lord, help me now. Lord, I thank you. This already take care. Yeah. Lord, what you doing today? <laughs> Lord, what you want me to do? What's up? Why, what, what are we going to do? How are we, we going to sell it? How, we, how is it going to happen? You See, you can be praying, working on agendas instead of praying what wants trouble to change for you. Be working on agendas. Oh, God's agenda. You get anything out of that? Yeah. Praise God. And he's hovering over us right now. He wait for us to speak. He wait for us to say stuff. He's too powerful for you to put him in your notes and say, mm, that's some good stuff. I learned that. That's, that's, well, that's some well teaching there. He said, well, it's only well when we get a manifestation. He said, because I'm the manifester. He said, I'm the one who come change everything. He said, come on, let's go out and do something exciting today. He said, let's go dream big. Let's make something happen. <laughs> That's my prosperity laugh. You're supposed to catch that right there, my prosperity yeah. laugh. You know how everybody, you know, getting small goals and stuff like that. I said, God, I won't be on top where everything comes from. I already looked at one place that I'm going to visit a gold mine. I just going to talk to her. I just want you to know my name and recognize my face. I don't know how much gold I'm going to get, but I'm going to get this something. And you and I are going to get to know each other. Amen. Amen. I ain't talking about you. I'm talking about the people with the, the gold mine. Amen. <laughs> they going to get, because I'm going to a whole nother level. Because there's a promise that God wants to have that he gave to Solomon that he gave to us. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So if I can buy gold, somebody got gold, they got it from somewhere, let me go to where they get it from. Are you following what I'm saying? See, the Holy Ghost will take you to the next level. He'll take you to the next level. I am not joking with this one. Because you're going to see one day when I write that $100,000 check, you said he said he was going to do that, and here it is, and I'm saying, now go get yours. Now don't ask me for some money, go get show. Do what I showed you what to do, go get your own. Amen. Amen. Because you got the same power and the same privilege, amen. amen. What good is it that I give you money and you don't get your own money? Amen. Aren't you glad you're in a place where you can learn how to get what belongs to you? Yes. Praise God. I'm serious about writing that $100,000 check. I'm serious about building those facilities. I'm serious about that. Because if Kevin Hart can live off 25% of his income, I believe I can live off five I'm so rich. Amen. He's an entertainer. He said, I only live off 25%. And he got jets and all that stuff. I believe we could just live off 10%. Because you have so much that the rest of you, it just, it, you know, you got to get rid of it because there ain't no place to put it. Amen. Amen. It's, not, it, it, it's, it's come, become congestion. Amen. Amen. See, we got, he causes you to dream and to think big. That you can rescue children, you can help people. You can do all these great things that you've done. Don't look at your job to determine. Don't look at your bank account. Get the budget out your head. Well, show me here when God said, well, you get this much money a month and this and that. He ain't, do, he ain't did none of that. God said, come on, I'm going to get you out of that. I'm going to take you to the next level where dreams are reality. Amen? Amen. Come on, let's get God some praise. Amen. Thank you for tuning in to the Increase in National Ministries broadcast today. We pray that the Word of God has richly blessed and transformed your life. To know more about us, you may visit our website at increaseinternationalministries.com or connect with us on Facebook at Increase, capital I-N-T, apostrophe L, Ministries or contact us by phone at 804-658-4896. Remember, wherever you go, may increase in favor flow.